Well, I'm uh, I'm David. I've got uh, I've got about 20 years' experience in in both media and creative agencies. Uh, I am one of the senior strategic people, mainly working across uh, APAC and uh, Middle East, but also sometimes Japan, Russia, wherever the need is. Uh, but I'm also the head of connections planning, which is connections planning is our sort of updated 21st century way of thinking about how we plan and execute. Uh, media campaigns based on the way that the consumer has changed the way that they search for, uh, identify, choose, shop and advocate for brands. What we're really seeing now, uh, and a lot of this has been driven by the, the ubiquity of smartphones, is that the consumers have changed the way that they search the world or interact with the world. And that means we need to change the way we communicate to consumers. Uh, mainly because, A, there's more sm smartphones, for example, gives us more opportunities to interact, so there's opportunities. But we also know that there's other ways that our competitors can interact through, through smartphones. Uh, so we also need, we need tactics to be defensive there. But what the real difference is about connections planning, as compared to how we were doing communications a few years ago, is that most of the communications was really driven about through TV and driving awareness. About connections planning is we start off by focusing and trying to understand on the way that the consumer's path to purchase has changed. So typically it was quite simple. Uh, people used to see a, a TV advert. Uh, they, may, they would become slightly interested in the brand. Then if they encountered the product in a, in a, in a retail location, they may or may not buy it. Uh, and if they had a good experience, they might go and tell a few friends about it. And it was a very, very linear journey. Uh, but what we're seeing now, with particularly with because the ubiquity of smartphones, but also because of the prevalence of social media, is the way that people shop is changing. Um, I may see a TV advert, but instead of then encountering the product or the brand in a shop, I'm more likely to discuss it with people online, or I'm going to check out reviews. Uh, and other people's opinion, uh, and at which point I may already accept or reject the brand. So, um, so what we're trying to do with connections planning is look at the way that the consumer has changed his shopping behavior and adapting and evolving the way we communicate to that person. But we're also trying to do that in a way that it becomes a seamless experience. So wherever I am, if I'm, if I'm uh, if I'm out and about or I'm uh, chatting to friends in social media, we want to make sure that there is a, an, a brand experience that that person can go on that allows us to communicate all aspects of the brand, the product, the benefits, where they can buy it, how they can buy it, uh, and makes it very easy for them to purchase. So typically, uh, trying to win a customer uh, when we were just using TV advertising might take months because it took that amount of time for people to see enough of our messages. But now, uh, we can take somebody on a very, very rapid journey, explain everything about our brand in really sort of rich, engaging content, whether that's video or pictures or some other digital element, that we can communicate the entire brand and get them to buy within a very short period of time. Is that uh, the world is changing very rapidly apps, websites, social media are all popping up. Uh, but at the same time, that's also creating a lot more richer and live information. So before, when we were doing focusing mainly sort of on TV and awareness driving media, uh, we used to have to wait a couple of months for the tracking data to come out and then the sales data. And then a lot of the time we were looking back and seeing missed opportunities to connect with the consumer. Now with all those apps and rich, rich media, we're getting a lot more real-time information, which is allowing us to look to see what's happening today and respond in near real time. So if the consumer changes, we can see it instantly, and we can change I, I, I'm Obviously, we're all aware of the rise of ad blockers, but for us, ad blocking isn't the problem. The reason people ad block is because the advertising isn't interesting or relevant to them. If you communicate with a consumer in a relevant way, and you explain to them and show to them what the benefits are or what they're getting out of it, then they will engage with you. And there's lots and lots of different ways of doing that. It doesn't necessarily need to be through ads. 
uh, we, can, we can encourage people to interact with us on our Facebook page or our WhatsApp channel. There's lots of different ways to do it. But as long as you make the experience meaningful and relevant for a consumer, most of the time consumers are willing to engage with you. The reason why people use ad blockers is because they're bored of seeing highly repetitive messaging that has no relevance and no interest to them and doesn't enhance the experience of what they're doing at the moment. Yeah, I think that when we, when we look at the way that uh, countries evolve in terms of their digital adoption, we actually see a very similar pattern. Uh, what we see is some countries are slightly ahead and some countries are slightly behind. Uh, but now that smartphones are so ubiquitous that we see the differences shrinking smaller and smaller. So the way that a Japanese person uses a smartphone now is not that different from the way that somebody in Tunisia uses a smartphone. We're all using the same apps, whether it's a Facebook or we're all using search. So the behaviors are actually becoming a lot more similar. And it's actually quite interesting when you go around the world that we're suddenly seeing a lot more similarity and greater similarity in behavior across countries than we are different. I think it's always exciting to come to new countries for the first time uh, and, and, and experience a new culture because and, 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 I learn as much as I, as I try and teach. Uh, but what I think is so exciting about coming here to Tunisia is that it, it's such a young country and you, and you have that vibrancy and that energy and that, and that desire to be innovative and to, and to make a change for all the brands that we work on. And it's very, very exciting to be here uh, also, I think, at a time when we're starting to see a lot of change in the way that we are communicating to consumers. Because I think traditionally we're still very much a TV market, but I see, I see us being on the edge of that change because I think digital has reached that point and people are starting to realize that they need to have different in a more innovative solutions. So it's very exciting to be here, A, because it's a, a young, energetic market, but it's also exciting to be here because I think we're about to see a lot of change. Um, I, would say, I would say that there are probably uh, two things uh, that I would say. Um, Firstly, digital is, is providing us with a lot more rich information, fast information. Uh, and that's really what they need to be looking at and understanding what that data is telling us and building our plans on the back of that. The other thing that I would say is that when you're going forward uh, and the way that consumers are changing, it's starting to happen quicker and quicker, be prepared to experiment. Don't necessarily put everything or gamble something on something new or something different, but make sure in every campaign you're putting at least 5% or 10% into something new that you haven't done before and understanding how it worked and taking the learnings and onto the next campaign. Because if you do that, then the efficiency and effectiveness of your campaigns will just get better and better very quickly.